are still watching a special program to commemorate the International Women's Day 2020 brought to you by the Transformative Leadership and Sustainable Development Initiative in partnership with Above Whispers Media Group. So let's talk about um, the trends in terms of policy framework. Yeah, Dr. Josephine, regarding this, we know that there has also been the VAP um, Act, yeah. the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. Act. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, um, that's actually the, um, it's a very um, all-encompassing um, piece of legislation at the federal level. And um, it took quite a while to get there because um, the bill, before a, 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 a legislation becomes a law and acts, it's first a bill. Mm. And um, about 12 civil society organizations in 2001, including myself, we came together and said to ourselves, we need a, a, a sort of a one-piece legislation that can capture different acts of violence against women. Because what you see most times, and even till now, you see a law on harmful traditional practices, in the East, it will be on widowhood. Um, you see a law on domestic violence. You see a law on uh, uh, um, whatever. So we said, okay, let's try and have it all in one no at the federal level. No pockets of laws. No pockets, you know. Mm -hmm. So we started work on that. And it took over 12 years. It was Jonathan just before he left that signed that into law. And that's the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act. Mm -hmm. The battle itself to get there, it was the Violence Against Women mm. uh, bill. And guess what? Our legislators said, they started trivializing it. Why would you be talking about Violence Against Women's bill? After all, women too have violated, you know? You know that kind of... Mm -hmm. um, water sentimental. Down. Water sentimental. No, no, not even sentimental. It's, mm. it's ridicule. Yeah. Mm. Come on. Mm. Why you be talking? No, mm. women They're suffer. Getting. You know, we, women, women mm. also are not. So we said, okay, what's in a name? So we went back to the drawing board and said, okay, let's change the name to Violence Against Persons Prohibition right. Bill. But the content of it, mm -hmm. it's quite clear. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of that law especially is that it expands the definition of sexual violence, especially rape. Because in the criminal code, when you're talking about rape, rape is about vaginal mm -hmm. penetration. But in the Violence Against Prohibition Act, it expands it to all orifices. So... Mm -hmm. A man puts his penis in a girl's mm -hmm. mouth. That's mm -hmm. sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. You know? Anal mm -hmm. um, uh, rape. Mm -hmm. And we are seeing it today. Young boys are being raped. Absolutely. Annally. Now. You know? So it expands the defi definition of, of rape. It also gives the, 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 the survivor some sort of, in terms of protection order and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. you know? So we have that Violence Against Prohibition Act. As it is now, it's at the federal level. That means it works in Abuja. States are, requ are, requ are, requ are required to uh, localize them in their states. As of the last count, just about eight states have, have, domest have yeah. domesticated mm -hmm. them. As of the last count, which includes Ekiti, Anambra, Nugu, Kaduna, Edo, I think, and um, a couple of others, like just about eight. Mm -hmm. Just about eight of them. You know. so, it is something that we need to, I mean, we've grown. Post, I mean, pre-Beijing, we didn't have this. And going even further, apart from this, now we have what we call sexual assault referral centers, SACs, mm -hmm. which is a fallout. Now we even have, um, recently, last year, it, um, the um, um, sexual offenders register was launched. Yeah. The sexual offenders. So now, just like what operates in the UK, in America, in other climes, mm -hmm. we all have a right to report someone, who, especially a person whom the court has found guilty of rape or any other sexual offense. So that it helps, so that we know when someone is coming to live in your neighborhood, mm -hmm. when you're going to take your child to a school, or when a school is even recruiting a teacher, you know? Mm -hmm you'll be able to make some inquiries. Mm -hmm. Oh, where a is this? A, a ground check on him or her. Oh, where is he coming from? What made him or her leave the other school? Because what you see all the time is someone will commit an offense here, have, run to another mm -hmm. place. We don't even have proper Do documentation. No documentation. Mm -hmm. And you ask for the referral, he gives you his priest or his, uh, <laughs> his brother. <laughs> of course, they will never say anything wrong about him or her. Oh, yes, I know him and all of that. So it's, it's, it's something that has evolved over time. And 
it's, it's, it's heartwarming for some of us mm -hmm. because we know where we were. You know, a lot of younger people may not know, you know, they would see some of this and say, oh, okay, it's, you know, but I, some of us, you know, we know where we were that at some point there was basically nothing much or nothing, but here we are now, we, we, we're making progress. And well, in terms of, for, for one, we have um, the sex for great builders yeah. also, you know, trying to... That was, um, yeah. oh, I wish um, Kiki was here. <laughs> yeah, because, no, it, it was, it's something that has been happening. Interestingly, mm -hmm. it's, it's happening mm -hmm. in our own times. It's not new. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a lot of lecturers in the universities take students as their gratuity. Mm -hmm. yes. Or, yes, as their, mm -hmm. okay, this is, where, yeah. this is where my, my, this is where my benefit mm. is coming from. It's not new. But what that particular documentary by Kiki Modi did was just to throw, just throw it out there. Because there's a lot of threat and intimidation. Yeah. There's a lot of threat and intimidation. A lot of people keep quiet, not because, you know, people will say, oh, but girls are enjoying it. These girls, they don't read no, and all of that. Please, let's not mix it up. Let's not get twisted about this. As a teacher, as a lecturer, there are certain minimum standards. You're not supposed, even if a girl dresses indecently, then what are you a lecturer for? What are you a lecturer for? You're a lecturer not just for academics, but also for morals and everything. Please, mm -hmm. can you go back? Mm. Get dressed and co don't come to my office that way. She doesn't give you and you grab. <laughs> you, you, you don't. Yeah, yeah. And even as a lecturer, you're not supposed to date your students. Exactly. Yeah. That's just, just wrong. It's unethical. It's unethical. Because I did listen to Waki Kimodi. Unfortunately, she's not here. Yes. I wish she was here. Um, one of the things she said was, you know, um, some lecturers are trying to kick against Asu. pushing it. Asu. Asu, Asu, Asu mm. chairman, actually. And then they are saying to you that the corruption is even more serious than, you know, but this, this shouldn't it be. It is the height of trivialization mm -hmm. of issues concerning women and girls. It's one thing we need to understand. It's the height of, there's a lot of, I mean, people trivialize it, people ridicule it. But like I said to but people. What's happening? It's existing. Yeah, but what I tell people, I said, look, there's a saying in Igbo that if you send a chicken out in the morning, in the evening, it will come back home to roost. Do you understand? How is this? I'm not happy about it. Right now, we are dealing with a sexual violence epidemic in Nigeria. 70% of uh, um, uh, reported rape cases in Nigeria are children. Yes. Child sexual abuse epidemic. So they are not looking for adult women like us. They are looking for our kids. Because three, four, five, six, ones. seven. And then people will say, oh, indecent dressing. And I'll say, how will a three-year-old dress? How will a four-year-old dress to attract Mm -hmm. You know, a man old enough to be her grandfather. Do you understand? So all of this issue, we need to stop this ridiculing and trim. Because what is happening now is that little boys have been raped. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We've trivialized domestic violence for so long, so long. Trying to make an abnormality become normal now, in our society. Now what is happening? Women are lashing back. Men are being killed now. Yes. That, that is the most popular one is the PDP chairman's one mm -hmm. in our But that's not the only one. Mm -hmm. We had, there's a young lady... Who's in prison? Who's in prison now fighting? I mean, our case is on. A lawyer, a female lawyer, who killed her. Fem uh, the one that we, we heard the story that not only did she cut off, cut the, you know, yeah. she killed him and cut off his private yes, part and gave yes. it to him. Oof. The lawyer in, oh. um, um, uh, in, the, in, in the Ministry of Justice in Ogun State or, or so. You know, it's happening. And that's because when things are just at that little level and we don't do anything about it, Escalates. You are giving the monster mm. room to grow. Mm. Mm. And that's what we're saying. So, Abidja, okay, I see your facial expression. It seems as though you have a lost bottle in and you want to say something. Do you want to no, add to that, this? No, it's just that, you know, um, the, you know, she mentioned that um, some lecturers are kicking back against yeah. the, Asu. the bill. Mm. The bill. And for me, I, I mean, obviously they will kick back because there's, I mean, there's a stat that out of 100 lecturers, yeah. you would see about 75 of them, you know, are also perpetrators as well. Because if you want to say, if, if this is passed into law, right, and you want to go, I, I won't say a witch hunt, but you actually want to get deep into it, and you want to do your investigation, you realize that most people have that story. Hmm. I finished from OAU. My father was a vice chancellor. People will think that, you know, some things didn't happen. But the level of confidence that some lecturers had, it's still, I mean, it's still so... 
I mean, despite to yeah, them being that's, So you can imagine. So you imagine <laughs> yeah. the very, the very vulnerable, the very, mm -hmm. the very, the, the, the ones that are ones, are the ones that are carpenters or you can, yeah. and, and they, they, they can only sense fear and vulnerability, yeah. and they will Absolutely. feast on you. Absolutely. They groom them. They look out for them. They know those ones that yes. they are. They know they are struggling. not. They, they are struggling. Mm. Yes. Mm. And Do you then know they how capitalize. many people have receipts or how to, you know, um, what you call the carryover and carryover retake, all that, just because they refuse to sleep with a lecturer. I think it's very demonic. That's what I say. It's you know, so wrong. It, funny enough, it goes just beyond schools, yeah. even in workplaces. What places? You know, I had an NYC girl call me one evening and say to me that she had to tender her resignation because the CEO of the company said to her, it's either you sleep with me or yeah. you, you resign. Yeah. And she had to That's resign. So, so this is a harsh reality that people, yeah. young ladies, women are going yeah. through. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, if I will just add anything, something to it, I, I don't think it's new. Like yeah. uh, no, she said earlier, I don't think it's a new phenomenon. It's been happening for time, for, for, for a very long time now. But what is interesting, what is poignant here is the fact that people are speaking up. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, that culture of silence is the being power. demystified. Yes. And I think that is the prerequisite to change. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, change, of course, we should expect that people will fight back. You cannot want to change a, a certain way of life that people Absolutely. have been used, used to, to and people don't push back. Mm -hmm. So the advocacy has, been, has to be done in such a way that, you know, the easiest trap to fall into is a trap to make it as if it is the men that are under attack uh -huh. and I keep on saying that the, what is important here is a case of good uh, versus evil yeah. is we need to demarcate that yeah. and make it very obvious and continue to encourage the ability for people to still come up and speak I mean the Busola Dakolo incidents right now who could have thought that in Nigeria a married woman who also has a husband yeah. is going to come out and speak about yeah. such an yeah. allegation to have yeah. taken place I mean how many men are comfortable and interested, for that to yeah. even happen so I think we, we, we're moving forward in, in that in that yeah. and for, for me the takeaway for me now is that Nigerian women are speaking yeah. That is the beginning. That's the real beginning. And also Nigerian change. men, because I mean, like you rightly said, like rightly, I mean, and that's for me the. I mean, if if someone asks me, twenty years of running Project Allah, what would you say is your major achievement? I'll say breaking the silence, yeah. breaking the silence, because twenty years ago, people would not want to talk about it, but now everyone is talking about it. Fathers are seeking help for their daughters. Mm. Brothers are seeking help. Uh, Timmy was the one that first lashed out. Mm -hmm. Timmy was the one that first lashed out on no behalf really of, the, you of his... Know, do you understand? Because it was affecting their marriage. Yeah. It was affecting mm -hmm. their marriage. Because I tell people, when people were saying, come on, this woman is shameless. How can she? I said, look, mm -hmm. for a man, first and foremost, Busola did not come out first. The person who came out first was her husband. And for this guy to come out like this, definitely that thing was affecting their marriage. Mm -hmm. Of course. Psychologically, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even sexually. Because if people understand the psychology of an abused woman, yes. a woman who's been sexually abused, sometimes you're in love with a man, and as a man is coming to you, 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 you love him, you want to get emotional with him, and then that monster comes. Mm -hmm. The There's face of that monster just mm -hmm. comes in front of you and then throws you off balance, and then there's a problem. You know, yeah. We really need to understand how this thing works. So breaking that silence, people now, men now, honestly, like he said, we can't assume, we cannot make a blanket statement here that it's all men. There are beautiful men. Absolutely. There are men who can't oh, understand why some other men are doing Do what, what they, they are do. doing. We have, fem we have male encouragers, we have male champions, you know, who are speaking out, who are actually in the forefront of this. What we need is just to encourage them and give them that platform to just keep going. And there's this freedom that comes with, you know, speaking out and breaking that silence. Re relief. Mm -hmm. It's like one big... Because a problem shared is a problem I've solved. Because fear doesn't solve anything. It, it just keeps burying you, digging your feet in yes. the ground. Yes, mm. that's what it does. That's what it does. I just chip in something. Um, the Sex for Greats bill, yeah. mm -hmm. I feel like one, one way to... One way to actually go or fly with this is to not just make it about women, because I think that's the interpretation right now. Mm. The, the, the lecturers that are kicking against it, it's not just about women, it's about, it's not it's about our male students as well. Yeah, they also get course. sexually harassed and invested as well. Wrong. But they don't talk about it. Yeah. They are female lecturers that harass yeah. them. Yeah. They are female lecturers that oppress them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it's very important to say it's not just a women's issue. Yeah. It's very fundamental. It's everyone's issue, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it should be addressed. Mm -hmm. But that is what it is. It's about everyone. Yeah, it's it's about just about like, everyone. you know, it's people choose women. to wear the lenses they want. Yeah, that's of the what they want to see. You know, and I mean, it's just like 
and the average Nigerian, when he, he or she doesn't want to accept something, you say, <laughs> oh, they, these people that brought it from abroad, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. this, these people that went and schooled, schooled abroad <laughs> mm. and are importing this yeah. thing. Mm. Once someone says that, know that the person is trying to mm. shy away from even listening or accepting. So it's, but it's about everyone. It's about everyone. It's about everyone. The young men, the boys in the universities are having, having one hell of a time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They are. Because even where a boy likes a girl, and the lecturer knows that, yeah. okay, nice. so yes. you want to compete which haunts, which haunts <laughs> with me, the he goes after her. I mean, he goes after him. So it's about everyone. It's about yeah. humanity. I mean, these are real, harsh realities yes. that, you know, yes. we, people are dealing with. Yeah. But thank you yeah. so much for the segment. However, we know that Dr. Josephine, after the segment, would not still be with us, but it'd be very phenomenal. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take a quick break now. Please stay with us. Mm -hmm.